Hey folks, Chip here. Long time since we've posted a regular update for KidOps, and that means we have a bunch of really cool new features to share. So let's get to first things first. Finally, you can now edit in local mode. Yay. This makes things so much easier. Let's check it out. So here we are in Blender, and I should mention that Blender 3.5 was just recently released, and you'll need to use this version of KitOps in order to run 3.5. What version are we talking about? You need to be working with at least 2.24.17 in order for it to work with Blender 3.5. So here we are, we have a uh, object, and I'm gonna duplicate this, and let's say I wanna go ahead and put something on this face right in here on this selected object. See, it's gonna be really hard to do that, but now we can actually go into local mode, which is pressing the forward slash key on your numpad, and now we're in local mode, and we can easily just go into KitOps. And we can choose a K-Pack and just grab whatever we want on there and add the insert. So we remember if we hit F, we're gonna snap it right to the center. I'm gonna turn off face orientation, you can see what's going on. We'll grab another one and I'll put it over here so so you can kind of get the idea that what, what's going on here is we're able to add inserts in local mode go back out of local mode we have this one as you can see we've got this one placed over here correctly and so that's wonderful something we've been wanting to do for a while and that is to enable kit ops to work in local mode so maybe the coolest new feature is the ability to create your own decals from ping files. And even cooler is the ability to erode those decals as well. You can create your own libraries of pristine or worn decals in just a few clicks. This used to be a KitOps batch only feature, but we've put it into KitOps now and it's super simple to use. So let's check that out. Okay, let's check out this new decal feature. So the way this works is what you want to do is just click anywhere in the scene. You can click on an object or not. It doesn't really matter. And we'll go down to Kit Ops and we'll actually hit this little menu item here that says Create Decal. And once we've done that, we can actually go to any folder that we have PNGs in. And these are transparent PNGs and they don't have to have any particular color. These are medium gray ones. These are from Sir Charles and they're pretty cool. Uh, and let's just grab something like... Uh, Let's see what we have. Let's find like something like this. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we've selected the correct KPAC folder where we're going to save this decal in. So here we have something called S test, and I'm going to create this decal from a file. And it's going to take a little bit once I hit this button. It'll take a little bit, and you'll see pretty soon it'll show up right there. And then I can just basically go in and find a you know a face that I want to put this decal on. And I just hit this add insert button, and I'll drag it over here and I'll move it down. And as you can see, there's our decal. Now, let's say I want to colorize it or something. Well, we've got this, this shader. We go into our shader editor, and we have this. We have some instructions here if you want to, but it's very simple. Basically, if I want to change the color, I can just turn the color on here and just choose a color, right? I can just choose whatever color I want. And if I want to erode it, I'll just come in here, and I'll just start generally just pulling this slider, slider to the right or to the left, and I can erode it however I want. And this works both in EV and in cycles. So you'll get to work either way. So so you can use any transparent PNG, you can colorize it. Hey, the other thing you might wanna be able to do is, let's turn this off and let's make it glow. So what I'll do is I'll grab here, and instead of, of the principled BSDF going in here, we'll go ahead and put the glow in here, and I'm gonna make it maybe five, if we look in Eevee, you'll see that it's glowing fine. And we can, of course, make sure that it's also an emissive in cycles as well. If I just go into cycles and then let's just, you know, turn off all the lights. So it's still glowing nicely in cycles as well. So that's the great new decal feature in this latest version of KitOps. As many of you may know, Mark Kingsnorth is the primary developer for KitOps. And he has also added another off requested feature, linear arrays. You can now create arrays using KitOps inserts, and you can even mirror them. Here, let me show you how it works. So we have a KitOps insert here, and I'm gonna select this box right here, and I'm gonna add the insert to it and scale it up. And let's just go over here. Uh, and I'm using the end button to move it anywhere I want. I can hit F, and it'll be right at the face, E on the edge, and V on the vertex, but I'll just hit the end button. And I'm gonna move it right about, let's see, move it right there. 
Let's turn off my face orientation and you can kind of see what's going on right there. If you recall before, as long as you're in group mode, you can say shift D X and you could always just, uh, you know, move these and then shift R, you could do it, you know, shift R. You can continue to do that. So that's one way of, of duplicating, but that's been in KitOps for quite some time, but I'm gonna undo all that. And what I want to do now is I'm just going to take this and don't forget when you're moving it, you want to be in group mode because if you're not, you can actually, you might, you know, you, this is, this is just moving things in object mode. So I'm moving this up, for instance, in object modes like that. I'll go back into group mode. So we're going to want to array this object. And because we grew it so big, let's look at the item. We'll see that it's got a huge scale on this thing. And I'm going to just go ahead and assign the scale to it. So now it's at one. And then I'll go back into Kit Ops, and we have this array button. So I'm going to say, give me two, and we're going to go 0.5, which is fine. And then I'll just add maybe three or four. And if I want to, I can also mirror it in the Y. So I've got that as well. So that's a really cool feature, the ability to go ahead and add mirrors. If I just move this one around, of course, all of them are going to be moving as well. So that's just a neat thing. So one of our other developers, Anthony Erguis, has added a new feature which will automatically check for updates to KitOps every 10th time Blender launches or monthly, whichever comes first. And this way you'll be up to date on the latest version. So as you can see right here, it says update available. And depending on where you bought it, you can click either one of these buttons. Now, another way is if you don't want to eat this real estate here, you can just close this and you can always go into preferences and in 3D, you have this check for updates here. And it'll tell you, yeah, there's an update available and give you those same links. So just want to let you know that we are going to let you know when new updates become available. And notice that this is 2.24.17. And I've set it so that it's, it's showing that there's an update available, but there actually isn't one for this. Uh, I just want to show you that and how that works. So that's really it for the new KitOps features for this version and the fact that it's now working on 3.5. So I hope you enjoy using it. And if you have any questions, hit us up on Discord. And thanks for watching. I'll see you online. Bye.